Yeah. Hey, I have a lovely crew of people that is there every night. You know what I mean? And uh, and I am so grateful for them. I'm really appreciative of what they do because I think it's hard to do the same thing. You know, eight shows a week. Uh, and I think for the actors too, part of the challenge for them is finding a ways to keep it fresh. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you know, like ways to make it magical because the audience is not there every night. Right, it's, right. it's their first audience. time. Yeah. yeah, so you have to keep that relationship straight. Um, and, and it takes a special talent to be the kind of person who can do the same thing each other a week backstage. Yeah. They always wear black, nobody ever sees them, they're invisible, they're always wearing laundry baskets full of heavy things. You know? <laughs> and I'm always giving them notes. Like, hey, you know, did you know that hammer? Yeah, because they, they're like right on top of, you know, when they're doing a quick change in the dark, A, it's dark. Mm -hmm. And B, and you know, the person comes running to you, you do the quick change, on they go, you take their old costume away in the laundry basket, you don't actually get to see the costume. And then, but that's my job, is to sit in the house and go, oh, by the way, you know, mm -hmm. did you notice that so-and-so's missing the button? Right, you know? <laughs> because a lot of times when you're working the clothes backstage, the, the show goes by so fast, and it's, you're always in the dark. Um, so you, don't, you can't actually tell what the clothes are doing and not doing if you're in the dark. So, yeah. I, my job specifically, you know, ends at the curtain line in many ways. But except for fittings. Fittings are like a massive part of my job. That's what we've been doing this week actually, is just fittings, 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 fittings. So, do you love it? I mean, do you love it? I do. I actually, um, I couldn't ever believe that I've been on the same show for 20 something years. But um, the, the great thing about fandom is it does keep surprising you. Yeah. Just when you think, Oh yeah, I've seen every problem, I've seen every mistake, I've seen every everything that could possibly happen. It's like the cosmos goes, oh yeah, watch this. <laughs> you know, it's like, I just worked on Phantom Moscow and um, at one point during tech, you know, there was a, some yelling and screaming backstage, like, you know, a piece of scenery was moving and everybody was yelling, stop, stop, stop. And a stage manager came in and came to us, you know, like with the interpreter, of course, like, can you come backstage, can you come backstage? And I'm like, what? And they said, like, uh, Irina is stuck under the opera box in her costume. Her costume's underneath the scenery. I'm like, her costume is underneath the scenery. Like, how? You know, it's because they put up a piece of masking, and she wasn't used to it being there. And she was running off stage, and, they, and she couldn't see where she was going. And she felt the, the curtain, and she stopped. And the opera box was rolling on, and it got on top of her train, and she kept kind of, kind of trawl away from it, and she was literally like, it was up to about here. And she was all crammed in one side of her costume, and we had to sort of unzip her and kind of lift her out. I mean, it was just like, I'm like, oh my god. You know, like a week from opening, we have like a ruined costume. You know? Because she couldn't see where she was going. And I thought, really? Seriously, people? It's like, I, you know, it's like one of those things you think, no? Yeah, how did this ever happen? And how did it ever is. happen? And, yeah. yeah. She just, she let go of, Rowell's dragged her off, and she let go of his hand and stopped. And if she just <laughs> let herself be dragged past the curtain, it would have been fine. Oh, yeah. You know, little surprises like that. But it's, it's challenges. I mean, those sketches, right? Also, Maria's sketches. I don't know if you guys noticed this. She draws people that are, especially the ladies, they have big hands and feet. But if you look at the proportion of where this woman, how tall this woman is, the waist is basically here, yeah. which means the legs are really long. You can't get eight ruffles that are this tall on a waist ground of a normal human being. You just can't. So we're always trying to sort of like, all right, I have to make it look like this, but I only have a person who's, you know, this high. You know. So it's, um, but you also, have probably never seen a woman whose waist is exactly the width of her head. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> but I was a woman whose waist is the width of her face, right? So you have to sort of try to get the proportion of this one. And some of your actors are pretty big and some of them are like, that's a little bitty bitty, you know? Because we hired them for the voice. We found about the opera, right? We have a lot of opera singers in the show. Uh, in, in the old-fashioned days, they tended never to be small people. Yeah. Now it's sort of all over the place. But that's kind of part of the challenge, is making this one sketch look exactly the same on six different body types. Over and over and over. Yeah. And also finding the fabrics. You can never find the same fabrics twice. 